السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم ما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى today I wanted to wrap up a one part of at least entrepreneurship and people that are in the worldly sense successful Allah Azza wa Jal uh, in the Quran in, again Surah Al-Qasas gives us the example of Qarun Qarun is a very interesting figure he's mentioned in this detail in Surah uh, Al-Qasas towards the end where in the beginning of Surah Al-Qasas Allah Azza wa Jal actually only mentioned Fir'aun and Haman and their armies and the armies of Fir'aun are the obvious enemies of the, the Muslims of that time, the Bani Israel. But Qarun was an internal enemy. He was uh, basically, you can call him a sellout. He was extremely wealthy among Bani Israel. And how can that be if they're a slave race and they're overpowered and they're living in the ghettos? Well, Fir'aun actually hired some people or he, gave, he enriched some people from within that community so he can keep an eye on them from the inside. It was sort of an inside man for working for Fir'aun, and that's how he became extremely wealthy. And so, because he, and Allah explains his wealth, Allah says, you know, in Qaruna kana min qawmi Musa, alayhim. He was from the nation of Musa, he rebelled against them. He was, a, he was a rebel against them, meaning he was a traitor to them. He wasn't loyal to the Israelites, so he was loyal to Fir'aun. And that's why, and Allah says, Allah allowed him to have a lot of wealth. Wa We allowed him to have hordes of treasures, and I've talked to you about his treasures before, Mafatih and Mafatih, that discussion is in the same ayat. But what I highlight to you is the archetype of a wealthy person, not just, the question isn't just about where that person got their wealth from, but when someone is in a position of wealth, they become prominent, whether they like it or not. They become, I mean, because they're employers, because their, their housing is different from everybody else's, their ride is different from everybody else's, they, they stick out. And when they stick out, they become, whether they like it or not, role models. People want to be like them. People want to emulate. They see that as success. Whether our faith teaches us success is something bigger, something more than worldly wealth or not, it's human nature to see a nice house and wonder, wow, I wonder what it's like to live in a house like that. It's human nature. You can't help yourself. You see a beautiful car, it doesn't matter how much dhikr of the akhira you do, you're going to see a nice car and say, wow, that's pretty sweet. It's just going to happen. Right? So there's one part of us that just it desires beautiful things. Allah put that inside of us. It's not something evil in and of itself. It's something Allah put inside us. So when people like that are around, then they, people you know, deep down inside want to be like them or they want to have what they have. And this, you know, the wealthy realize that. They get a whiff of that, that people look up to them or they want to be like, they're trendsetters. And this can become a real problem. They can become they, for themselves and for others. So the mature in the community, and this is the really you know hard thing for successful wealthy people, is to have mature, good friends that aren't friends with them because of their wealth. And they're not going to say they're not going to be afraid to say something uh, to them in all honesty, because out of fear that they're going to go out of favor from them. You know, because when people are famous or when people are wealthy and people are in a posi position of political status, then their friends try not to say something against them because they don't want to come out of that elite circle. But if they're fortunate, if the people of wealth, people of status are fortunate enough, they'll have friends around them, sincere brothers around them, sisters around them that are honest to them. Sadiqu kaman, sadaqak, laman sadaqak. And it becomes more and more difficult the more and more wealthy you get, the more and more prominent you get the more difficult it becomes to have sincere friends around. That will say to you what the right thing is no matter what. Anyhow, Allah highlights the, the people of sincerity in the community who actually did give him advice. And that's their greatness, that they were bold enough to speak out and say this to this person who everybody else obviously looks up to because of their status. And they gave a, like a you know, compartmentalized bit of advice. And I just want to quickly just mention the first of those things and I'll go through each of them inshallah one, one after the other in these sessions. So, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِحِينَ First bit of advice, don't be overjoyed because of your wealth. Don't like, because you know, this is, the word id is used, which is ضَرْف, as you know, right? So his, he would look at his treasures and then when he'd look at the shiny gold coins or whatever they were, his eyes would bulge and he'd have a smile on his face. 
And that's what people noticed and they said, look, you, need, you get a little too happy when you see your money. Or you get a little too excited when you see like the bank account or whatever else. You need to calm down. That's not the source of happiness and this is not something you need to be <coughs> celebrating. Because this in the end is a test and you're forgetting that. You know? A person with those kind, that kind of money, they have enough to eat today, tomorrow, the day after. They have enough. But still what happens? You want to see more and you want to see more and it makes you happy. And this is a problem. This a money for the sake of money. That you know, you get addicted to making more and more and more. So his friends are telling him, or the community, sincere community is telling him, don't be this way. Don't become obsessed with money itself. Don't ex become obsessed with wealth itself and find happiness in that. And you know, people that become this way, then they lose everything else in life. And that's the last thing I'll share with you guys. They lose everything in life. All they care about is making more money. They don't have time for family. They don't have time for friends. They don't have time for, just, they're just constantly thinking, how do I expand the business? How do I take it further? How do I make this, make this money work more and more and more for me? And that's what their entire life becomes. And when they see the returns come, ah, now it's cause to be happy, cause to celebrate. You know, so they'll throw parties, corporate parties and all this other stuff when huge returns come in. Because that is their source of happiness. Nothing else is left. لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب الفريحين. You know, happiness in and of itself is not a bad thing. It's not. But this kind of happiness, materialistic happiness, Allah says He doesn't like those who are happy in this way. So it's not, Allah is not saying Allah doesn't like happy people. <laughs> it's not what He's saying. He's saying people who are overjoyed because of material gain. Those are the kinds of people Allah doesn't like. That's where they started their advice. And they gave him like this one by one by one bit of advice. It's very comprehensive, inshallah. We'll share that as the days come. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Hakim. Wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayat wa dhikr al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.